the next episode of Waifu Wars. I am the shirtless man inside a whale's body trying to save the smaller whale that's also in the bigger whale's body. Do we do? And I am the number one kind of stand who will support her even if the whole world and the mangaka is against her. <laughs> so, Welcome Ooh. back to the next episode of Waifu Wars where we talk about all things anime, the good, the bad, and the weeb. Macho waifu. <laughs> because the manga cop really does not like her, apparently. <laughs> What's going on, Oni? I'm doing better compared to the last night. I was like dying of tiredness and exhaustion. How are you doing, Drew? <laughs> no, well, today is the day where I'm. <laughs> I'm exhausted last night and I'm exhausted tonight. It's great. <laughs> um, it, it was like. Well, no, not so much today, but yesterday was kind of just like, everything's fine, do 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 Literally, I kid you not, five minutes after we did our live watch, which you guys can catch if you join the Patreon, slash become a Twitch sub, sub, slash become a YouTube member, we live watches every Sunday around 7pm Eastern Standard Time. But that aside, right after you finished, like maybe five minutes tops. Mm. My mom calls me to the basement where it is flooded <laughs> from the rain. Yeah. And there goes me with the water back, which by the way, anyone who owns a home, I would say, I, I don't know. If you have spare money, I would just say get a water back. Unless you've never had a problem with flooding in your life. Where does the water go? Like, it, is there is it like an actual vac that just like has like a big ass water jar? In yeah, it, or yeah, the, the, the tank where the water is, store the water there, yeah. and that was the bad part because when it's full, it's really fucking heavy. So, I was gonna say how it must be massive then because it's not it, no, it's not huge, it's not huge, not so massive that I can't lift it, but it's still heavy because it's like, just think of like a giant ass pail of water <laughs> like mm-hmm. and i had to throw that out in the rain once it got full and i had to repeat that essentially like four or five times okay so yeah it sounds exhausting so when you hit me up being like being like oh i fell asleep can we record this tomorrow uh by the by the way for everyone it's coming out a day late so we're recording on a monday mm-hmm I was like, you know what? I'm not going to fight you on this because I'm exhausted. <laughs> and then today I went to my doctor's appointment in, in, um, in the city. And oh my gosh, the way they turned my feet every which way but loose. Oh my <laughs> gosh, they kept twisting it, doing like just checking from range of motion. I, and, and what was worse, like the doctor was kind of cute he had a, a medical student with him um and at some point they were both like examining my feet <laughs> so it was just like i was like in my mind i was like in another lens i feel like this would make an awesome doujin but <laughs> on the other like in reality this is so uncomfortable these two men just mm-hmm. twisting my feet and and then the x-ray, and then I went to go get an x-ray, and then the x-ray machine. I don't know if you ever had your your foot x-rayed, um, Oni. Nope. Yeah, so when they have to x-ray your foot, they're like, let's get it, let's get you into all these positions that generally just suck for your feet mm-hmm. and are very uncomfortable, but hey, it's what, it's the best view that we need for the x-ray. Um... And then the machine broke down halfway to the x-ray. So that was fun. And then I came back and they were like, okay, we're going to do more stuff with your feet. And I'm like, okay, cool. <laughs> it's like at this point, just cut the foot off. Um, <laughs> we need to amputate. <laughs> we don't need to amputate, but amputate anyways. Uh, but yeah, so... And then after all of that, <laughs> I had to crawl my way back onto the subway and take it all the way back home luckily the grace of god i bit like i barely got on like just as um 
um um rush hour was starting because mm-hmm. i uh, i would die <laughs> i had to do all that and then like just be crunched into a subway also my god not not going on a subway for so long i keep forgetting that yo people stink shit whoa yeah, the subways are horrible whoa now. whoa no like this one dude just went and sat he wasn't even like like we were on opposite sides of the door and i smelled him from there <laughs> i smelled him from there he wasn't even like directly next to me and i smelled him i was like this is awful so yeah that was my day <laughs> <laughs> Still tired, yeah. But you know what? We're here. We're here. I'm queer, and we have a fun show for you. So let's get started. Mm-hmm. As always, with our new segment this week in anime. Um, I'm gonna go first because mine's just small news. Mm-hmm. Uh, according to Anime News Network, go for Nakamura. The Bia manga gets a TV anime. Um, the official website and the Twitter account opened on Friday to reveal that said series getting a television anime. Um, it's about a shy boy who falls in love with first at first sight with one of his classmates, his dreamy high school classmate Hirose. But there's a problem; they haven't met yet. And Nakamura is a total clut to my bungle thing before they even begin. So it seems kind of cute, and I definitely kind of might want to watch it. I don't know. Just recently, the the BL anime have been really consistently good. Mm-hmm. I'm watching one right now, and I and I and I really like it. So. I'm, you know, I'm I'm excited. I'm excited. The animation looks really, uh, <laughs> it looks very interesting, to say the way. <laughs> very cute, but very, very interesting. Wait, let me show it to the Oni. Send it to you. Like, that's, sec- like, this second image of all the characters, I'm like, this is very... <laughs> This is very interesting. It's it's giving this in my mind I'm hoping it's it's giving a com well, it's a say oh, romantic yeah, is, comedy. So yeah. Very unique animation. Exactly. Art style. So the rom com it yeah. It looks good. I'm I'm excited for it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Nice. Yep, that's it. Alright. Uh completely on the other side of the spectrum we have an example of a company milking the hell out of a show that just needs to die, all right? <laughs> But Attack on Titan finale compilation film has been announced for November. Um, they're basically going to be airing an Attack on Titan movie called Attack on Titan, the movie, The Last Attack. And as you can imagine, it is just the last two movies put together. Part one and part two. And that's it. it well, it, it, the, the company says it will have brushed up animation. <laughs> So they probably just like little light little you know brush marks to like one seed of like all right, ship it out, boys, <laughs> and make <up>. money. <laughs> this, yeah, this is so this is so money. Like, did they realize that they spent too much money on this series and were like, we need I to guess. we need to make some money back? I feel like that has to be what this is. Listen, the one I love sense, either way. I love Attack on Titan. It's like one of my top enemy of all time. Yeah, same. But they. This is like the Skyrim of anime. They just keep coming back. They milk this series so hard. I well, mean, I mean, uh, Kogias is right there, but continue. Oh, well, Kogias too, but at least... At least, right, it's, well, at least, at least it's new Kogias stuff. It's not like new, the same yeah. shit repackaged. <laughs> at least Kogias has the dignity to, like, listen, we're not going to do anything with Lelouch. But we will keep making spinoffs off people nobody cares about. <laughs> <laughs> but... With Attack on Titan, they're just like, no, we're going to keep doing the Eren story and repackaging it and re-releasing it and combining it. I can't wait for the next movie where it's going to be just like all of season one, two, and three put together or something. Yeah, Jeez. I can't wait to uh, ignore it. 
But yeah, so they are continuing to milk that cow for now, in case y'all are interested. Milking the cow for now. Mm-mm-mm. Yep, I guess to anyone that's dumb enough to give them their money to watch this again, let us know if it's worth it. <laughs> mm hmm All right, we're we going to... Now that we're done with our news, it's time for our weekly reviews, and we're going to start off with Oshinoko uh, Season 2, Episode 7. Uh, is this my episode of the week? <laughs> oh, really? I mean, it was a really good episode. Excuse me. Uh, yeah, I think it's my episode of the week. Mm. I just assumed it wouldn't be because, you know, I don't know. But it, yeah, I, think, I can I think recognize the quality, though, I, objectively speaking. Yeah, I think I'm going to agree to make it my episode of the week as well. This is why I hate dramas. Mm. Because they get me attached to a character, and I know that the whole thing is supposed to be like, well, obviously the character has to go through like ups and downs and stuff, but oh God, they I hate these in dramas where they're just like, all right, well, time to shit on your favorite character for the entire season. <laughs> I wouldn't say they shit it on her. They, I mean, I feel like it's a... I don't think this episode was them shitting... It, it, it's like her, they don't directly shit on her. It's not like they're saying, "Wow, Kana is such a piece of shit, garbage." But like, uh, I feel like they're indirectly just using Kana to bolster Akane's character. Like, "Wow, look how much better Akane is than Kana right now." <laughs> I think it's just. Like, can we can we do the reverse? <laughs> can we have like can next season just be Akane fucking up all the time and then being like, "Whoa, um, Kana's so that, amazing." We, we already had that. It's called season one. That did not happen in season one. Um, Akane was like in season one for all of two episodes. Yeah, and, and she then... and she almost like unalived herself. So <laughs> yeah, I think I think we can like hold off on Akane for now. I think we, I think no, we, rest. Need, we need we need to re, we need to revisit the Akane like revenge tour. I'm sorry, you gotta balance it out. <laughs> we really once again her her being bullied till she almost jumps off a bridge is I, I that was one episode. kana has <laughs> been going through this for seven episodes now. <laughs> oh my gosh! It, it, no one's bullying her. Like it's just them. The entire writing other. staff is bullying. <laughs> What are you t talking about? Kinda, <laughs> kinda, that one episode where Kana literally dunked on Akane. Like, what are you. She no. dunked on Akane for like all of a minute, and that was it. Akane literally, like, this is like the only episode where Akane, it, it felt like Akane was truly in a place of superiority. Only because mm, she's just we, like. We must be watching different shows, though. <laughs> well, like, like. Her op, well, she's operating from a place. The entire she's operating season has been from a place as, of superiority. The entire season has been framed as Akane versus Kana, but very much from the perspective of Akane being the the better like protagonist of this season. Because we're everything is from Akane's point of view, not from Kana's point of view. I just wait. Kinda so then, wait. Then went, you agree. Wait. Then you're agreeing with me. Wait. Did I? No. How am I agreeing with you? I'm saying it's all from Akane's point of view. I mean, no, it's not. There's other people who are... Well, most, everyone's people saying that they're pretty much neck and neck. Like, they're both really solid actors. But No, but the show is, like, portraying it as, like, you're supposed to be rooting for Akane here to do better than Kana. Really? I don't Like, it's so. really setting her up as the... She's really... She's not the... Pro, she's, like, the protag of this season. Can we at least agree on that? She's by far the most prevalent female main character of the season. I don't know. I think I think they both share the. Share the oh, plot. okay. I, think, just just I would argue. I would argue and say that Akane. Name here. one time. Name Akane's name one scene actually, where Kana did anything besides the scene where she just shit on Akane for like one sentence, and that was it. Okay, fine. Fair. <laughs> fair e enough. I don't know. They, I feel like whole... she doesn't do anything, but they just talk about her a lot, though. Because they're setting her up to be the heel. They're setting up to be like the. Oh, Kana's so fucking great, and, blah, blah, blah. and then Akane's gonna beat her, and that's why it's like it, it's it's the whole mm, like shonen. I, don't, I wouldn't David I, Goliath thing. I wouldn't say that just yet, only because I feel like I feel like they were setting up Akane to be like the one that's coming up on top, but now Akane's like 
oh, I want to push her to truly act so I can outshine her. And then there, and then, and then Kana's going to have a breakthrough. And then, I don't know, I feel like Kana, by getting that breakthrough through Akane, with the help of Akane and, um, and Aqua, she's going to be like, oh, yes, I am that bitch. And then she's going to outperform everyone. And then no one's going to see it coming. Oh yeah, that's I know I, that's I, gonna happen. Then why is that a but bad I, thing? That's because good. until it until it happens, I'm gonna be salty as oh hell. Gosh, that's why out. I said I'm gonna. Oh that's why I said I I. It's kind of like watching. I guess this is how Shonen fans feel if they're watching Dragon Ball Z and they see like a hundred episodes of Goku getting beaten up, and then that one episode happens. Like, like yeah, obviously, obviously he's gonna come back and beat up Frieza or whatever. But just watching your favorite character get beaten up for a hundred episodes sucks, even if you know they're eventually gonna win. So. Once this, after we watch this season, because I need to watch the season with the mindset knowing that, that Kana is not just going to fall off. And once I have that security blanket, I can thoroughly enjoy the season much more. I don't know. Like when, I don't know. This is one of those seasons where I have to know how it ends before I can fully enjoy it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> because this season is just bashing my favorite character for 90% of it. Well, as much as I love Kana... I'm not that invested to the point where I don't know. I'm having weird anxiety over a character who does not. See, but that's a good that's that's a good point because it's like the show's so good. I'm so emotionally invested in it. Mm, it, it, but you, I feel like it's for like the wrong reasons. You're like, ah. well, that's why I don't like dramas because if I get emotionally invested in dramas, I just get salty and mad for the most of it because. <laughs> oh man, God, it makes me. Oh God, I wish we could just watch Peach Girl. And then you get <laughs> no, and then oh my god, you because if, if you like the main character, you would oh you would just hate you would hate the bad guy. She's so awful. <laughs> well, I probably like the bad guy because I tend to like bitchy evil women. Yeah, I feel like you actually would like the bad guy personally. <laughs> like she's just she is kind of just I don't know she she might be a little too I don't know I don't know it would it, be a hypothetical until you watched it. Um, I. I will say I do like that they put the whole, like, juxtaposition of Akane being, like, the live for your dreams and outshine everyone, and then kind of being, like, the kind of jaded, like, yeah. oh, you know, I have to do what's best for the team and mm-hmm. everyone involved. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. She views it more as a business, and Akane views it more as, like, an expression. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it's, it's, it's really interesting, because... That Akane sees that, and that's, and then we kind of understand. Kana's like, why you always act? She always acts as if her acting is better than mine. And then Akane's like, because it is. <laughs> Akane's like, yeah, because <laughs> my acting is better than yours. Like, because you're playing it safe, and I'm acting. Mm-hmm. So, but that's what that's what uh, Kana got in trouble for when she was a kid overacting over everybody else and being like oh well you're acting so good we don't want you in our show because you're gonna steal the thunder from everyone else oh i thought i thought she was just a brat to work with well that too she was also a brat to work with yeah i thought that was like the major reason why no one wants to work with her but but yeah that was a it was a very good episode. Um, watching the animation of Akane just spinning and twirling and everything. Oh, oh, so mm-hmm. pretty. Oh my gosh, I feel like they they keep one upping themselves every episode. Oh well, I I think the quality was the same of last week's episode. It's just this is a the animation is about a, you know shade a character that we actually care about. So <laughs> so yeah, True. this is. I am curious where, how much longer the. Uh... Because we're only episode 8 of 13. Which, by the way, fun fact, this is longer than the first season, I think. The first season was only like 12, or no, it was only like 10 episodes. Mm. But I I wonder where they're going to, like, how long this play is going to take. Because it feels like they're almost at the end of the play already. Yeah, that's probably going to end in like two episodes. So we're going to have a lot of uh, episodes left to do like a whole other mini arc. Mm. How are going to be? Ruby's time. Hmm. Is it Ruby's time, or is it going to be just more Aqua? <laughs> more Aqua being like, where is he? <laughs> uh, yeah, I always forget Aqua. Aqua has this whole, like, vengeance plot thing going. Mm-hmm. I low-key don't even care about that plot. <laughs> so, 
It's like I can't, I, I, I can't, it's like, I can't put when it's on screen. Dot dot dot. Like, like when it's there, I'm just I, like, oh yeah, this is happening. Oh, look. then I, that's the one instance where I'll care about Akane if they if they go back to the revenge plot and Akane like helps him and is like a crazy yandere bitch. I'll be like, yes, more of this. <laughs> but if it's just Aqua sulking around, being like, I need to snoop around, I'm gonna be like, eh. Where's Ruby's idol contest? <laughs> mm, or it's actually just going to be Akane helping Aqua kill this person, but he doesn't even know that she's helping. Mm. 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 Yeah, we saw this episode that Akane is like super smart too. I yeah. mean, we knew that, but even more so now. Yeah, so very, very interesting. Mm-hmm. Um. I did feel so bad for Kano and Kana. Like, Akane was, like, challenging her. And then Kana was just like, no, I'm going to shrink back. And then Akane was like, no, stop it. <laughs> mm-hmm. No, don't make me shine. Didn't you hate me this entire time, girl? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I'm looking forward to, to just, well, the end of this performance. I'm, I'm looking yep. forward to what I hope will be Kana's moment in the sun. Same, hopefully. All right. Up next, we have Alia's feelings in Russian. So we figure out who Ayana, Ayana, who Ayano is. Um, I was like, wow. <laughs> you know the memes are like, "Oops, just berries." This time it feels mm-hmm. like, "Oops, j- uh, yet another lovable get- girl in the main cast." Mm-hmm. It's crazy. They're piling up. Uh this feel this feels very much like um um the hundred girlfriends who love you. Oh it, yeah. It feels like yeah. that, except he's not dating any of them. <laughs> yeah. And these these girls are even more crazy and unhinged somehow. I don't know. Then the comic girl? No. Ah I, maybe I misremember, but I feel like only a couple of them were crazy and Miss, I don't know what right, man, Miss, I t- <laughs> Miss, I suplex everybody. Like, did you remember how they <laughs> all broke into like a girl's mansion uh-huh. and like yeah. were okay like... with said girl's mother also dating their boyfriend? Yeah, no. They, they I had a. I was. I was just thinking about the uh, the lowly and being like, oh, she wasn't crazy, and I was like, oh wait, everyone else was though. <laughs> <laughs> right, and yeah, she was like the least. Crazy. She's just she was just traumatized. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um but yeah, no, Ayano, she fits in just fine. Turns out she is essentially Yuki's maid. Bodyguard, maid, attendant. Yeah, all those things. And we find out that Kuze's grandfather is apparently super loaded. Mm-hmm. Very rich. And I guess for just whatever reason, Kuze left the family. And yeah, and Ayano had that conversation with Kuze, and uh, Kuze, 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 he, he's a cool motherfucker. I, I actually kind of fucks with him. <laughs> I kind of like yeah, him with every I episode. Like him a lot. He's a really good MC. Yeah, like, let <laughs> so the thing. First of all, everyone's doing a lot behind this student election. Yeah, I was like, what are the teachers doing? This school? Like, everyone's doing a lot like uh, behind this. Because, like, why is wh- why is the grandfather trying to tell them <laughs> to not intervene with the um, student council president? Like, this is a lot of drama. Th- there's a whole ass Game of Thrones happening in the student council. <laughs> right. Like, not the grandfather getting involved. And then Kuze, I think he appropriately responded. He was like, Fuck off. Like, do you guys understand? Yeah. Say it to my face, bitch. Yeah, why you care so much? Fuck off, hey. And apparently that made Ayano's oh. womb. Yes, off. I love you. Said, <laughs> <laughs> he said, oh, he stole the man. He stole the man I, I love and admire. His, what, I, quote, his assertive, his assertiveness and sends shockwaves through my womb. End quote. Yeah, <laughs> and even Yuki was like, "Whoa!" Yeah, Yuki was like, "Hey, yo, <laughs> <laughs> take it easy, take it easy." <laughs> even, even I have limits. <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, but yeah, and I don't. She's just she's very cute. Like she doesn't get like most colloquialisms. Like sub. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and and God. even when that even when that scene with it was Ayano and Yuki, I'm just like, damn, Yuki really carries this anime. Like it's like every yeah, scene. Yeah, I was gonna say every scene Yuki's in, she just eats the entire scene. Like, and just, like carries why? It like hard. she like literally, I feel like she's always like the best part of the episode. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I was like, what the fuck is she saying? Like, damn, no wonder you're the prodigy of the family. You're just the best character. In the exactly. show. I'm like, it makes sense. Mm-hmm. But. The things that Yuki say, especially about her brother, it, it's giving that, like, her brother, like, it's giving the MCs, like, actually, like, low-key just, like, a genius, but he's like, I'd rather just be a Like, lead. yeah, like, a, yeah, I don't want to get involved type of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and then Yuki and Alia play poker. That was so cute, because Alia's just so... It's just like, oh, yay, another thing that Alia's bad at. <laughs> <laughs> uh... I like when one of her face was talking about them and she just kind of like insulting them inadvertently like, oh yeah, I, uh, you can easily read her expressions. And her sister is kind of like ditzy. This is kind of di- uh, Yo, I <laughs> like I said, I, I think there's not there's not a, fe- a female character in this series that I don't like because I love Chisaki. Yeah, they're all great. <laughs> That's her name, yeah, Chisaki. She, that, that made me laugh because she just said the quiet part out loud every time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, that was that was so funny. Um. Oh wait, there is one female character I don't like. That bitch that showed up at the end. Never mind. <laughs> the, I, you are right. The the, the the bitch with glasses who just. <laughs> I feel like this. <laughs> like this is the type where I'm. This is the moment where I'm reminded, and this is the type of anime that Savior likes. Yeah. Where someone just comes out of nowhere and just gets really. Confrontational, Aggressive. confrontational, <laughs> and disrespectful. She's like, "How dare you, <laughs> you shameless bitch! How dare you get Kuze to be here?" Oh, you're just minding her business, doing nothing. Right? She's like, "What?" <laughs> and, then, and, then, and then he's like, "Hey, I don't know what you're saying, but like, that's not what happened. So can you like apologize? Like, I'm shout out to Kuze for not being like." You know, because I feel like some main, main characters like really soft. And he's like, "Hey, we're just," you know, he's trying to be in the middle and not mm-hmm. kind of, you know, held anyone accountable. Even though clearly yeah, one yeah, party is clearly is in the wrong way in the wrong. Yeah, I liked how he was very realistic. He was like, "Listen, can you just apologize to her because you kind of came on way too aggressive?" Exactly. And then she's like, "Not only am I not apologizing, I'm stu- I'm a- challenging you, Kuzey, to sue in Congress." <laughs> and then she's. And then Ali was like, excuse me, not you is like that's only for candidates only. And then And then she was like, Girl, I just need you like just just be a good little puppet and stay out the way. I was like, Ooh, <laughs> Ooh That was that was nasty. That was rude. Oh wow. Um <laughs> Um You know what the sad part is? What? She kinda has a point. That's the only thing I hated. I was like, what, that was a nasty, Arya's that was a nasty a read. A puppet? Not so much a puppet. It's more like... It's more like, if she wins, I'd, I'd be surprised if it was because of Alia. If Alia wins, I'd be surprised if it's because of Alia. Yeah, yeah it's probably going to be because of Kuzer. <laughs> exactly. It's less of a puppet and more of a... Bigger head. Yo, you know what would be crazy? What? Actually, oh, man, I hope this happens. But I hope Aya realizes, like, oh, that maybe I do need to win this on my own to prove I can do something without Kuze. And then they swap running mates. So then Aya gets uh, Ayana, and then Kuze gets <laughs> Yuki. <laughs> yeah, I don't think that's going to happen. Uh, that would be such fun interactions, though. <laughs> that would be. I agree. Oh. Um... I really liked the the scene with uh, Masha and Kuze when they went to go get drinks. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I kind of really like them together. Excuse me, not like not romantically per se, but just like in, like their scenes together because they kind of 
they kind of like marry each other to an extent yeah. Like they're both like kind of pretending like they're not super incredibly confident people mm-hmm. who can get shit done, and they all, and they both have their like reasons for doing it as well. Like Masha's like, you know, I want to make my sister confident, so I just act you know a little ditzy, you know, just for her, so she doesn't feel like she has to compete with me, right? Um, and she's also like, cause you know. What did she say? Basically, she was just like, you know, we can all use a little more ease in our life. Which I, I'm like, that's incredibly, like, a mature view to have. It's one of those moments where I'm just like, this is one... It's like, I can tell the manga, the manga is like, I don't know, maybe like self-inserting based on their own life experience. Because I feel like that's yeah. something you learn, like, when you're much older. <laughs> that's something I learned when I was much older. Yeah. It is, I find it funny that all her scenes are either her being, like, klutzy, ditzy, or she's alone with Kuze and they have, like, some deep philosophical mm-hmm. conversation about her. <laughs> like, yeah. damn, pick a mode, girl. <laughs> yeah, you know, they're both hiding stuff. They're both older siblings. Mm-hmm. And both their younger siblings are also mm-hmm. on the same council. Like, yeah, they, they, the similarities between them are... They exist, so it, I enjoy their very intro, their introspective conversations with each other. Yeah, I don't think I don't match them romantically, but yeah. I do like think they have really good chemistry. Mm-hmm. And and that's why Kuze at the end <laughs> when she brought his head, he's like, "How can you see through me so clearly?" And I'm just like, "Because she's kind of you, bro. Like, <laughs> I'm you. <laughs> she's kind of you." <sighs> yeah, that was that was a good episode. I enjoyed it. Indeed. Mm-hmm. All right. Up next. Well, well, before I go move on, I'm also looking. I'm I'm interested to see how Yuki's gonna respond to like all of this shit happening. Oh yeah, that's gonna be fun. Yeah, I feel like she probably be like, mm-hmm, ooh, she's probably gonna be, ooh, well, they're gonna handle this shit. Hmm. All right. Up next, we have Power of God episode. Seven, season two, episode seven. Yes, sir. So, <laughs> like always, like everything in this series, <laughs> something boils down to a game. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't much of a game. It wasn't much it of a game, which I appreciate. Really quickly. <laughs> it, which I kind of appreciate because I feel like this went on a lot longer mm-hmm. than the original. Um. Yeah, where they're just like trying to fight Mazino, and who is apparently the strongest person in the tower, or one of. Basically, mm-hmm. that's what he claims. I, I, I mean, considering really? how he also looked pretty strong. <laughs> I'm no, no. I'm not. Say, I'm saying he's probably true. It's probably true. It's probably true. <laughs> it's like you see him fight again later on <laughs> mm-hmm. so yeah I, I i would i would think so he's and you know <laughs> he was very he was very kind and letting bam live yeah um that's why i don't hate him because he's like he's not like super kind gentle person at all but he's like just like a really fun character and for the most part he's like relatively fair especially when you know he explained why he did what he did which i love that they're kind of you know this is the this is the season where we're getting into like the politics of the tower Mm -hmm. like we're really getting to the meat and potatoes of it or right as we start, um, I'm not sure if you were. I feel like you were, were you able to follow, kind of. For the most part, yeah. There was nothing like specific going on, but I get like a general sense of what's going on. Yeah. So the different factions. Yeah. The 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 Yeon family was uh sending people to collect the flowers to so to keep the the I guess the market price low. Hmm. 
And then he was like, nope, I'm going to stop you guys from taking this flower and potentially killing this baby. And so we can have more of this endangered species, like, everywhere. Yes, I will so, make them grow. There will be hundreds of them. Exactly. So he's actually doing it for a good reason. <laughs> yeah, he's, a, he's an environmentalist. He cares about it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah. And I forgot. I forgot about that, too. I was just like, oh, shit, I forgot. Um, that they that they were doing shit like that. So yeah, you get a peek into the fact that yeah, the 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 families, the the big families, you know, they're, they're kind of they could be shady. Unbeknownst to even their own members of said families, because um, the fire girl y- y- Yeon Hwa, she she's very disheart. You know, she's like really like upset at this. She's, and she locks herself in the room. Mm-hmm. Uh, which is great because the red hair girl, um, um, the guide, I guess we'll call her the guide. She she drags her for filth. She's like, oh, why would I even bother with a girl who who can't even cook her own meals? I can't was like, cook for herself. <laughs> mm. I was like, oh shit. <laughs> I really like her because she she's clearly guiding every. Well, she is a guide, but she also like moves everyone to like you know kind of like uplift themselves and do better but in very sneaky like Mm -hmm. snide ways Mm -hmm. agreed um also i like i don't know i feel like a lot of the the characters you know you can see them changing and kind of growing as a team especially after Mm -hmm. the whole um after Jing Sun kinda kinda threatens them. Like he's like, hey, uh you know, Lee dump dump bam, we'll get him a team. I don't have to kill y'all. <laughs> and yeah, the, the at first um Wagnon was like, let's leave Bam and everyone else was like, no. Like <laughs> You know, they go as a team. Um, the 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 dude who was like an asshole in the last game with the hotels, uh, Prince. Hmm. Yeah, even he's like, you know, turned. You know, is clearly turning a new leaf. And being like, you know, he's he's even like Tung Wagnon, like Wagnon, you fucking lame for this. <laughs> I'm trying to get us. Yeah, I was, I'm hoping we get like a little more characterization for him too, like. I actually care a lot about this crew, this group. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that was really cool, seeing a little bit of character development for, like, like the whole party, just them bonding more. Um, and then we see that, you know, even between the members of Bug, uh, there's a little bit of discord. Uh, people aren't happy with the way Din Sung is doing the whole situation with Bam. Mm-hmm. You know, <laughs> everyone including including Karaka is like, why don't we just kill them all and replace the new team? <laughs> 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 but Din Sung, you know, as you can tell to some level, he actually cares about Bam. And is like, I don't want to completely turn this child into a killer. <laughs> yeah, let's not ruin his entire life. Please. Like, we ruined a good amount of it. Like, it's bad yeah. enough that we, like, kind of forced him to do this under the threat that we're going to kill his friends. Mm-hmm. Um, so, but then, yeah, Karaka's like, hey, keep an eye on them. If they do something crazy, kill them. I was like, oh, Haraka, sneaky, sneaky. <laughs> uh, also, randomly, at random parts of the of the show, I don't know if it was consistent because I was maybe I wasn't paying attention. I really like the background music. Really good background music. Oh yeah, the soundtrack in the show is pretty good. Mm-hmm. I don't think it ever was bad per se, but yeah, so I was just like when they were talking, I was just like kind of listening back. I was like, oh wait a minute, this is kind of cute. Uh, but then lastly, the guy tells him about the workshop battles that's 
gonna be taking place in two years. I wonder if they're gonna do a time skip. I honestly, I forget. I was gonna say I thought this the season would like lead up to that, like it ends right there, like right before the workshop or whatever. Um, Actually, how many episodes is this season? I don't. Oh, I still don't know. <laughs> it doesn't say. Yeah. I still don't know. Power of God season two. How many episodes? This has been googled so many times. Oh, it says, day and... it says 13 episodes according to MSN. MSN? MSN? I was like, MSN? I was like, like, <laughs> I, I was like AOL MSN? <laughs> I don't trust them. Um, yeah, well, according to MSN, there's 13 episodes. Right, um, we'll see. We still got time. Uh, coming soon. That net says thirteen. Um. Yeah, this thirteen episodes. I feel like it needs to have like a second core or something, or just a season three. Uh, given how much of this they're adapting, it probably will. Yeah, because it's like I, I, even in five episodes, in five episodes, I'm like. <laughs> That's still not like that's 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 a lot. That'd be a lot to cover. Maybe a little too much. Mm-hmm. But for now, the pacing is pretty solid. I'm I'm not complaining. Um. All right. Now it's time to move on to Isekai Suicide Squad, episode ten. Which is the final episode. That's all he should final episode, you're right. Yeah, it's before season two, which was inevitably teased at the end of this. Mm-hmm. Um Though I'm not sure how successful the show is, so I'm not sure if it will actually get a season two. Mm-hmm. This episode this is a solid final episode. My oh, I enjoyed the second yeah. episode, yeah. I just my only complaint is I wish all the episodes were as good as the final episode. <laughs> Agreed. I really feel like they should have put the the power up stuff in the beginning. I don't. I don't think it needs to be in the beginning. Maybe like in the middle. Yeah. Well, like definitely earlier than this. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely because they're like, oh, this opens up a whole new avenue for cool shit to happen. Why did you leave it till the end? Yeah, I guess they just wanted a big moment. I guess. And they're just like, you know, kind of poke full hole that anime. And be like, <laughs> look at us right my transformation sequence. But they all had such cool transformations, and they actually were really badass. They are. They were. And I was like, cool. Whoa, this was missing the whole show." <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think mine is it's a for my for me my um the transformation sequence my favorite one it's a it's a tie between Harley and Peacemaker. I think those are my favorite ones. Yeah, those are two best ones. Yeah. <laughs> yes, most. Although I did I did like Clayfaces as well, just for the Michael Jackson yeah. reference. Yes, <laughs> yes, agreed. Uh, yeah, I just like Peacemaker because <laughs> they did. They definitely did the. Which I like. This is what I like about this episode and like the whole spirit of Suicide Squad. Like they're clearly making fun of the magical girl thing, where he clearly like just becomes butt naked before they put his <laughs> clothes on. Like that's that was done super intentionally to make fun of the transformation thing. I think Harley even had the same exact like pose as Sailor Moon, where she like curls up. And like grabs her legs and then stretches out or whatever. So yeah, it was very intentional. Yeah. Um, but they also they had really cool weapons. Harley had like the fucking hyenas and also a gun that was really cool. And also yeah. the hyenas exploded. Yeah. <laughs> They're like magical hyena things. Peacemaker with his uh, gun blade, his fucking yeah. squall Final Fantasy <laughs> Seven gun blade. That was that was pretty uh. That was pretty cool. And then, and then, and then Nanoe was literally just swim swim. Which yeah. Triggered, which triggered me, of course. No. <laughs> when are we getting that second season, goddammit? Hurry up and announce Fuck it. Swim swim. Love swim swim. <laughs> um, but yeah, no. The, the, the fighting was great. Those little kind of tongue in cheek moments was were funny. I love the part where Enchantress was they were trying to get her back, body back and she didn't really and she thought they were fucking with her body on purpose so she was like blowing shit up out of Harvey. 
I mean, I didn't. I feel like that didn't make a whole lot of sense. I feel like Intentress was like extremely overreacting. Because Harvey, I mean, Harvey I'll, clearly, let me drag your body. Harvey through clearly, the fucking... Harvey clearly didn't understand what was happening. Mm-hmm. <laughs> because you kept asking, "What's going on?" I don't know what's happening. You're getting really mad, <laughs> Enchantress. Enchantress <laughs> was like, no, Hulk smash. <laughs> no, I'm just like, oh, oh, so we're not going to try and clear. You're just going to be really angry. Okay. Well, sure, I guess. Um, but yeah, um, animation was really solid. Really cool last fight. Like, that was a really great way to end the fight. Mm-hmm. They were the- oh yeah, with the sword. Mm-hmm. That was really awesome. Uh, and then we found at the end that Joker has been using Katana's appearance. Yeah, it was a, it was a misdirect the whole time. Hmm. For for I mean I guess I was gonna but 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 why? But I'm like with Joker, that doesn't really. Well, there's it. there's no reason. For this. Like I forget that he. <sighs> Like, this is super surprising because he literally had, like, a long, extensive history of, like, being abusive to Harley. So, <laughs> mm-hmm. so there shouldn't be any surprise. I think I was kind of waiting for that moment to happen in the series. I was waiting for him to show up because I was like, Joker's going to be relevant at some point, so. I was waiting more to maybe, like, maybe a flashback where he kind of, like, fucks her over in some way, shape or form. Mm-hmm. But just never came. So I was like, oh, what? This, this is a really nice Joker. And nope, at the end we no, realized. He's not. <laughs> yep, not quite. Um, I mean, he kind of helped a little bit, but he's just kind of fucking around. Yeah, he's kind of digging around. He's like, I'm not gonna go out of my way to kill y'all, but you know, I'm I'm here to cause chaos, and that he did. So, mm-hmm. all right. Um, I guess it's time for us to rate the show. This will be fun. Um, I guess I'll, I'll go first. I'm gonna give this. Mm-hmm. I'm going to give this a seven. Mm-hmm. I'm giving this a seven because. The fight, you know, the char- the characters are the characters are okay. Okay, the characters were fine, with the exception of Deadshot. Deadshot, like <laughs> literally, really literally, annoying. like sucked the life out of me. Like just like you can't just be super bra- abrasive and not be funny. Like then, yeah. it just like I just don't want to hear you talk after a while. He had like a couple of really funny moments, yes. but then. Most of the time, it was just him being a dick. In the right, way. and it's like dick in a not funny way. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, but outside of him, everyone else is kind of fun in you know their own way, and their you know the action was relatively great. Min- minus like a you know that one episode with the dragon. Where the animation was kind of like, oh, this is, this is a choice. <laughs> but other than yeah. that, it's like you know, this is, it's it's good for the most part. It it was it was good. Like it got better with each episode, minus the dragon fight. Um, and then the moments where they really felt like the Suicide Squad were really really good, so fun. So funny, so stupid. The eyes are glaring problem, which we said multiple times throughout this whole scene se- while we were covering it, is that those moments are just far and few in between. And we're and when they're not acting like Suicide Squad, if we're basically dealing with a very subpar Isekai plot, which I kinda don't care about. Yeah. Like the interactions between them with the people of the kingdom, like, they were cute for, like, five seconds, and then got really stale really quick, because it's like, oh my god, we're in jail, and then we're free, and then we're back in jail, and then we have one with the bomb. And then the... Yeah, it just, like, I, it would have been great if it was just them kind of flopping around everywhere, like, being like, oops, and then shit just goes crazy every episode. Like, that could have just been that, like, really episodic. 
as opposed yeah, I would have much preferred if it was episodic and just mm-hmm. insane as opposed to like an overarching plot of them just doing just going on an adventure I don't want to see these dudes on an adventure I just want to see them blow shit up <laughs> so yeah they tried to fit it in like like you you said Oni like when the show really suffers when it tries to like work with the plot mm-hmm. because they don't really give a fuck about the plot and quite frankly neither do we <laughs> yeah the suicide squad doesn't even get a shit about the plot why should i <laughs> exactly so yeah that's that's why my score is it's like it's mediocre but like those good moments bumped up to seven for me i am gonna give it a 6.5 Point five extra because I like the the ending was really good, but yeah, the for me it's it's I really wish they had taken the Konosuba approach, like you said. It's mm-hmm. like just make it more localized to just the Suicide Squad instead of like just higher like oh we need to focus on all these other Kingdom characters and all that stuff. Like no, just just the Suicide Squad. Make it episodic. They go on crazy dumb adventures every episode. Somebody fucks something up, and the whole episode is about them unfucking themselves. Just like Kono Suba. <laughs> I think it would have worked a lot better. But yeah, when this when the show is being like the Suicide Squad, this is easily like an eight, eight point five type of show where it's just like balls to the wall. It's hilarious. Like the bar scene was funny. So funny. Every time Peacemaker was like either murdering elves or he's just like naked and <laughs> like is hilarious. When it's the Suicide Squad, it's hilarious. When it's generic isekai number 5,755, it's, that's when it falls closer to, like, a 5. So I cut the difference and gave it a 6.5, basically. Mm. If we do get a season 2, I'm just hoping it's more crazy wild antics. And I'm guessing maybe it's Cope, but because Joker is going to be involved now, I think it will be a bit more crazy and off the wall if we do get a season 2. Yeah, that you're right. That does kind of feel like cope, but yeah, it is. <laughs> but hey, it's nice to dream. Mm-hmm. All right, now let's move on to Nokotan episode seven. Uh, I'll say this is like the first episode where I was a little underwhelmed. Just a little bit. Just a tea. Just a tea, oh, a wee bit. I'm trying to remember what happened. I remember the first part the, was the, the deer call. The deer call, and yeah. then and then it was oh, and then yeah, it was yeah. the YouTube channel. That's what I forgot. And, the YouTube channel. Yeah, and then, and the and third then part was the cafe. Cafe. So, and and I didn't. It's not like I hated any of them. I think my biggest peeve this episode. Mm. Honestly, I think it would have been a, um, a home run if they really went in, like, into the whole the Dear Cole thing. Oh, yeah. Because that, 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 that was, that was, that was, that was right, part. that was the best part. And then, and then they were just like, oh, yeah, they lost to this other dude. The end, end, end of this whole plot point. And I was like, no, yeah. no, that it was, was actually the funny. Where the, where the... Let's be dumb and random. Can't kind of bit them in the butt because it's like, wait, no, keep going with that premise. That would have been hilarious. It would like, have been so see Koshi dancing or whatever and doing her little thing, and it was like a whole. Imagine the contest was just not real or like, what are you doing? This is not a dancing. This is just like a regular dog show. <laughs> yeah, or something crazy. But no, they kind of just killed it, and then from there they went even lower stakes with exactly, the streaming because then just kind of went lower energy from there to a the point where the last mm-hmm. part is they're literally just going to a cafe. They get a cafe. Nothing really happens. It if they had just started with the cafe and then like worked its way episode, back just, up, yeah. Yeah. It would have been better. I agree. Uh, although there were some moments here and there that were kind of funny. No, the like YouTube the, cha- I, the channel the, was actually pretty funny too. <laughs> she was just like scratching her horn <laughs> on the wall. The wall. <laughs> I don't know why that cracked me up so long. I, maybe because I remember that that felt like Fucking cat behavior, like oh, you're scratching both. Yeah, right I think they were trying. Nah, yeah, they were, she was always trying to be like mirror a cat, so that was. Yeah, like I think I'll just fuck up your wall instead. Right, and then it was so fun. 
I found out how, like, the only one who had a problem with all the shit going on was, like, Koshi. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, even when, like, that ridiculous shit where, like, the horns kept, like, growing. growing. <laughs> Everyone's just like, oh, wow, cool. Growing horns. Like, wow. Oh, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> I like how she, like, tried to ignore it. It's like, no, don't fall for it. Just, just ignore it. Just ignore it. it. And it <laughs> right. <laughs> and it kept getting worse. <laughs> uh... <laughs> And then they're like, and then the, yeah, I don't know. The commentary was from the from the chat was really funny. Yeah. Um. Also, I would never have a a YouTube channel for my club. <laughs> what? <laughs> never. Why not? You're gonna stream from your club? That sounds like a terrible idea for many reasons. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and also, my I don't think the school would even allow that. No. <laughs> <laughs> could you could you imagine us streaming from our from our our high school? We'd be like, hey guys, what's going on? It's the anime club. All you hear is suck my dick. <laughs> <laughs> it would be hilarious. It would. Be, it would be. <laughs> yeah, that would that wouldn't go well. Man, we didn't have a dear club in our high school, unfortunately. Unfortunately. I, love, I found it funny. Like the the cafe part was funny though. Like like his reactions were funny. Yeah, that's what it, made it was it. a bit fresh. It was nice to see somebody besides Koshi being triggered by the deer stuff. Right, and then he wasn't even triggered by the deer stuff. He was triggered that he didn't have anything for her. <laughs> mm-hmm. Where's your, your antler stand? Mm, he's like, oh. you don't have one. <laughs> he's like, ha. Huh. I did this whole thing for you, and now she's gonna take a picture of it. Da, 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 and then she just stabs it and just starts spinning. <laughs> and then he just almost dies. Like, oh, <laughs> uh, that was great. I ca- actually kind of hope they revisit that. Just, I feel like the, I feel like it is gonna become a recurring gag, like a little trope thing where they like two episodes from now they go back and he fucks up some other way. Mm, I hope so. That'd be funny. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, let's. Move on to um. Do you want to do my hero first, or do you want to do the short? Because the short is the one that's next on any card. Uh, let's do my hero first, and we'll okay. end it with the short. Okay. Up next, you have my hero season, my hero academia season seven, episode thirteen. Um. So, I don't know, this is just like the We're Fighting episode. This was the Shonen episode. Very, very Shonen, which I have very few notes about it. <laughs> there really wasn't much to say. Right. I mean, it was just very... we saw Deku gear shift mm. and go into like fucking Super Saiyan mm. gear mode. I like that mo. I like when he, um, you know, the, the moment when he saw Bakugo's body. I don't know why. I feel like it's not mm-hmm. any more crazy than when that happened. Normal. <laughs> than like in, in other shonen. But mm-hmm. I don't know. It was just like so much music. Dun, 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 dun. I think the the cut to silence was more abrupt than other shonen. I feel like they'd be like. And then silence. Yeah. But it was like. And then just stop. <laughs> it's just very abrupt. It's because the music is really good in My Hero, so it's like even more noticeable when it's like a hard cut like that. Yeah. So, and that cool. yeah, it was cool to see Deku being like raging with and like getting himself under control. Being like, no, no, I have to fight with calm, cool, collected emotions. Yeah, so that's that's what he wants you to do. He wants you to be angry. Mm, I do like that angle where it's like, oh, I can be really fucking powerful, but I'd lose control and like be insane or whatever like wouldn't use my powers properly yeah so he has to actually like, keep himself calm yeah like you said we learned about the gear shift ability which is just broken <laughs> <laughs> it's just really broken yeah speaking of uh, magical raising project powers <laughs> fucking that's a magical raising project oh i have the ability to move small objects and by small objects, I mean my cells in my body to do whatever the fuck I oh, want. Well, I think I think if you're just able to, as it got stronger, I think you could just do bigger yeah, things. Yeah, evolve. 
Yeah. <laughs> is it bigger things or was it just to sell? Oh, I don't. I can't recall. I thought. I thought you said like at first I like, only do small things like, be and then my power got stronger. So I just assumed that means you can just bigger objects yeah. just lifts a planet. And just... <laughs> okay, okay, not that far, not that much. Just, just, just give, give it a couple generations. <laughs> <laughs> time to rewind the, the Earth. Wait, does that make time go back? Yeah, I guess. Yeah, because you're rewinding. I like that. Would it make you go forward? Going wait, moving the earth, I mean, mo we're making the earth revolve backwards. Would it send us back in time? Oh, like in real life? No. Yeah, right. That I'm like that's you, we we happen. we would just die. <laughs> <laughs> Work. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I guess you go back in time. You go back to before you were alive. <laughs> <laughs> Um, also, it's really cool, um, that the, we're getting to a part now, the shonen part, where it's like, even as they, as their fists collide, they could, they essentially can talk to one another-ish, or like their mm -hmm. quirks kind of talk to each so other, which, which, talking. which, by the way, kind of goes back to what I keep saying, how it's like, it's really interesting and kind of cool how they kind of evolved, like, the concept of quirks as, like, kind of... It started off just being like, oh, the quirks are kind of just like your X gene, and now it feels like it's evolved. The meaning of a, a quirk kind of evolved into, I would argue, like a potential like manifestation of your soul in some way. Yeah, I was gonna say quirks are like the force plus your soul kind of mixed it's, together. <laughs> exactly. So, which I'm not mad at because it's like you know this quirk is like a part of you. Mm -hmm. So it's not confounded that it's like oh yeah well if it's a part of you then you're a part of the quirk no, it's very it's very interesting take i i, I like it it's very... i do like their their power system mm -hmm. compared to most shonen yeah it's nice um but yeah this amazing animation that i'd expect of my hero really good fighting and all that stuff um, yeah, I think that's kind of all I have to say about it. What about you? Same. It was just mostly a fighting action -y episode. Mm -hmm. right. Last but not least, we have, um, the Plus Sized Elf, episode 7. Um, <laughs> this is a cute episode. Um, <laughs> the the main character and the MC get charmed. They get a free year supply of French fries, and then they get charmed into eating fries. And by well, them, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and by them, I mean it's just the main character. She she just wanted to eat more fries. Yeah, like Dark Elf, like oh, this fat ass just loves fries. <laughs> right. she's, she's a she has magic resistance. She has magic resistance. <laughs> it doesn't work on her. She just likes fries. <laughs> Oh, and then we find out it's, it's the satyr tricking them mm -hmm. again to get payback. She's like, "You saw me naked. It's his revenge." And then, <laughs> <laughs> oh, poor her. He, uh, first of all, it like it didn't even work because Elf is like, once her clothes rip off, just from like too much movement, she's like, "Oh yeah, I don't care that I'm naked." Like, and mm -hmm. and then <laughs> she's. She says something really sketchy. She's like, "Oh yeah, this homeboy like stretches me out all the time, or touches me all the time." <laughs> and but what I didn't would gag me. I did not expect for his clothes to rip off, and then he just yeah, that was a twist. And then he just gets he just exposed the satyr, and she's like, "No, you <laughs> made me see dick." Ah. <laughs> Uh, that was that was cute. Um, yeah, I like her as a villain. She's just kind of always constantly failing. <laughs> yeah, very funny. And then we meet what I believe is no. There's one more character I we have to introduce. Almost the last character we meet. Uh, Hitome. Um. Mm -hmm. 
which I I knew. I'm just like something told me. I was like, this, I I called that she was a cyclops before. So I was just like, they're hiding her face for a reason. And mm-hmm. the other girl was a dog, so it can't be because of that. So it's probably has something to do with her eyes. Probably has an, one eye, and she did. She was a cyclops. She's so man, which I you know that once again I love these cute little nicknames. Yeah, they're very punny. Yes. I, I'm not mad at it. This is like, this is a comedy. Like, we're not trying to give everyone a complicated name. Mm-hmm. And, first of all, <laughs> first of all, Oga is so, like, I actually kind of like Oga. Oga might be my, my, my favorite. She might look like my favorite <laughs> character. She's just so cute. She's so cute besides being, like, a big dummy mommy. <laughs> She's like, oh, time for sparring. Let's go. And then everyone's like, nope, we don't want to fight with you. And then she's like, oh, no one's going to fight with me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> in the corner. I'm like, oh, I love you. I'm not sparring with you, but I love you. <laughs> so precious. Uh, and then he told me, he's like, well, I want to fight. And she's like, oh. And then, yeah, and they just start beating the shit out of each other. <laughs> <laughs> kind of great. <laughs> uh, that yeah, it it was very 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 cute. Uh, episode. I don't know. I just like Olga. I just want more episodes of Olga in it. Yeah, the the characters in general are just likable. I really like them all. Mm-hmm. So I'll take more Olga. I'll take more Fish Girl. I'll take more Pig Girl. Yeah, they're all good. Yeah, we we need more Plant Girl though. Oh yeah, the Plant Girl has been around in a while. Yeah, bring back Plant Girl. Also, we like the dragon that showed up last episode. Bring her back too. Yeah. And Dog and Girl. Dog Girl. Dog Girl. I'm Dog Girl. I was gonna say. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we are done with our weekly reviews, which means it is the end of our show. Pony, if you'd be so kind, please take us away. Guys, if you enjoyed this episode of White Forest Podcast, make sure you like button and subscribe to catch every episode as it goes up every week. If you haven't already, do follow us over on Twitter, follow us on Twitch, and join the party on our Discord. All linked in the description down below. If you'd like, you can even become a channel member or patron and join us for our weekly live watches. Uh, we'll be watching the rest of Oshino Co. with our patrons, but soon we'll be a new anime season and we'll select two new shows to watch with you guys. So if that sounds interesting to you, you know what to do. And Drew... You have anything like to say? Um, the people that we're gonna see at NYC, I look forward to bumping into y'all. All right, and now on that note, this has been Soroni and Scooby Doo. I'll catch y'all later. Later. Bye.